Hey everybody, Taylor with KC here, and in this video, we're gonna be showing you how to assemble your Flex Era LED light bar into a larger length light bar. Um, so a 20, a 30, a 40, or a 50 inch light bar. In this video, particularly, we're gonna only be showing how to do it in a 20 inch segment because it contains everything that you need to know from the center linker system to the end mounts to how to set it from curved to straight, all that good stuff. So um, to start the video and to frame it, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually grab the box that your Flex Era LED light bar came in, the master kit, and completely unfold it. There's actually little instructions inside of the box itself on how to go ahead and do that too. It's easy, you can figure it out pretty quickly. But once you completely unfold that and lay it flat out on a table, just like we've done here, it gives you all of the instructions that we're gonna go over in this video. So all we're gonna do here is show you a visual demonstration of everything that's printed out on the box. So the center section is all printed true to scale. So step number one is prepare to lay out by laying out all of your parts. So um, we're gonna lay out our Flex Era LED light bar 10 inch segments with the face down on the cardboard itself. And we wanna do it so that the top of the light bar which is this side, when you look at it from the side profile, it's kind of the longer side, that's sticking away from you. So we're gonna do just like that. And we're gonna do just like that, lay that out. We're gonna go ahead and grab all of our hardware and lay that out as well. Um, that way you kind of have everything that you need all laid out nice and neatly. I'm gonna lay these just in the back. And we're gonna put our brackets kind of into the positions that they need to go as well. So you can see, this is the linker bracket right here. As you can see, this is the one with a lot of holes in the top. Kind of goes over that section right there. And these are the end mount brackets. So this is the same similar hole pattern, but it's gonna go on the ends just as such. So we're laying out all of our parts. Step number two, we want to put our power linker together. So the power linker is the over molded piece just like this with the six holes in it and the little KC logo on it. So that's gonna go right in this position right here. So in order to get that on, we actually have to pull off the six Phillip head screws here. Okay, so as you go ahead and finish tightening all six of those screws back in after you have placed your over molded power linker in there. Just go ahead and get those nice and snug. You don't have to go crank on these super duper tight, but you definitely wanna make sure they are tight because this is what's linking the power from your end power plug, where your wiring harness is gonna go into, all the way throughout the rest of the duration of your light bar. So as I mentioned, just go ahead and get those nice and snug. And once you have done that, now it's time to move on to step number three, which is the linker bracket installation. So as a reminder, this is the linker bracket. Um, right now, what we're gonna go ahead and just do is drop it into position. And there are two of the bigger M10 countersunk bolts that we're gonna be installing at this point on the bottom and two more on the top. That's gonna be your larger hex that's included. And at this point, just go ahead and get it into position. You don't need to crank these down super tight, just get them hand, hand tightened in there. It doesn't have to go crazy. Okay, and as you're finishing up the install of the linker bracket, uh, you really wanna make sure that you're actually not even really tightening the four M10 bolts that we're working on right now. Uh, mine is pretty much completely loose. Can wiggle the whole bracket inside of itself. We're not gonna sink these down yet until step six, because that's when we're gonna determine if it's completely straight or curved. So um, at each junction, you can make that decision, but that's a future step. So we'll get to that in a minute. So leave this loose for now. If you're installing a 30, 40, or 50 inch light, this is the point here where you're gonna just repeat the process at each 10 inch junction. Once you finish that and you're at the point now where, okay, cool, I got all my linkers done, you can go ahead and move on to step number four, which is to install the end mount. As I mentioned earlier, these are the end mounts. There's really only one way that they go on. They are pretty much the same part. So you just drop them on, on the ends. There's an M10 that goes on the bottom, and then there's the smaller counter, or sorry, the smaller pan head bolt that goes onto the top. So at this point, I'm gonna pretty much just rotate the whole bar 
put the bracket into position, rotate the whole bar uh, so it's down on its bottom side, drop the bigger M10 in on one side, just get it started by hand, get the other one in on the bottom, just so you make sure things aren't tweaked. And then at that point, you can go ahead and again, you're not going all the way to snug with these. You're just getting that bolt far in enough that it's not gonna annoy you or anything like that. So once you get the two M10s in there, uh, you'll see on the top, there is a spot for where you can put the set screw in, which is a little button head or a pan head screw with a washer. That's gonna go right there. This one is not countersunk, so it does not sit flush. And all you're gonna wanna do is get that nice and into position. Again, not cranking it down, not getting it snug, enough so that you can still move this end bracket as you need to. Okay, go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. This bar right here, we're gonna run it straight. So now is where the two extra small countersink bolts come into play per 10 inch segment. So again, I'm gonna line these rear holes up and make sure that I can get the small countersunk bolts into position there. And it's very small tolerances here. So you're gonna notice that there's not much of a difference between um, straight and curved configuration as the bolt holes go. Um, it's just enough to either allow or not allow the countersunk screw to go in. So, just gonna start with one at a time here. Get one side in. You can see that it kind of pulls the bar into the position that it needs to be pulled into. So that's why you do not wanna have these other bolts tight at this point, because as you put these set screws in, it's gonna reorient the bar exactly where it needs to go. So go ahead and get those snug down right now. So I have gone ahead and done that. That is tight. And that's pretty much snugged up right there. And so now our radius is set. Again, I set this in the straight configuration. So at this point, we are pretty much good to go to lock down the bigger M10 bolts at this stage. Okay. Step number six done. Now, Step number seven is when you set the angle of your end mount bracket. So what this is gonna determine is exactly where these sit so they're parallel to whatever you're mounting it to. Inside of the box, which we actually don't even have here, is a set of brand new L brackets if you're trying to mount it onto the bottom of a front bumper. But if you're mounting this to a UTV cage or a pre runner bumper or something like that that's already tapped out for a light bar with end mounts, you're really not gonna use those L brackets. You're gonna chuck them in the, you know, save it for the parts bin in your garage. So right now, go ahead and set your angle bracket to the position that you want. So I'm kind of eyeballing it here so that it's parallel with the side of the bar because we're mounting it onto our Can-Am X3 out in the parking lot. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up. Okay, and now that position is right where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those M10s at the same time, get those exactly where I want them to be. Okay, cool. At this point, everything's nice and tight on the Flex Air Light Bar, which really leaves us only with one final step. Now, at this point, it's where we need to install the wiring harness. So, in reality, what you're probably gonna do is you're gonna be running your complete wire harness before you connect it to this light bar. So you're gonna run it on your Toyota truck or your UTV or Jeep or whatever you may be mounting it onto. And then you're gonna be leaving your three wires exposed to be able to be plugged in on either side of the light bar. Whatever you decide to go, whether you're, you're installing the wiring harness on the passenger or the driver's side of the vehicle, doesn't really matter. Just do whatever is clean and easiest in terms of wiring because both ends of the Flex Era LED light bar can't accept the wiring harness itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you a mock-up of how to do that wiring harness because it does matter which order you put the wires here. If you put the ground in the wrong spot or the power to the wrong power, you are gonna fry the light bar. So you don't wanna do that. You're gonna be very careful with that. So next up, wiring harness installation. Let me go grab that.
Okay, so the final step here is the wiring harness installation. I've got my wiring harness right here. You're gonna see an end with three different ring terminals. You got a red, a black, and a white. The only other component is this little rubber isolator. This is uh, very important because it's going to make sure that there's no arcing or ability for these wires to touch one another. You definitely don't want that to happen as power is going through the sidebar, it would really suck. So. Um, if you look at your box, it has a great guide on what goes where. At the top of the light bar, which again, reminder, is kind of the longer end, that's where the red goes. The white is always going to go in the middle of these three junctions, and then the black is gonna go on the bottom. So I'm gonna be doing it on this side just for the sake of the example. So what I'm gonna do is grab my wiring harness end, and okay, I gotta remember, white goes in the middle. And for those of you that know how to use ring terminals, you'll remember that the flat side uh, there's kind of like a little step down. The completely flat side is what we want to go down on the light bar itself. So I'm going to put the flat side into the little rubber isolator, just enough so that it's sticking through the hole there. And then I'm going to move the black one up to the top. Slide that one, or the red one up to the top, I'm sorry, and the black one over to the bottom. And then at this point, I am ready to remove the six Phillips head screws, or the three Phillips head screws, I'm sorry, from the side of the light bar. And as I pull the last one out here, I am basically going to place the rubber isolator and the wiring harness right into position. I'm gonna kind of thread my screw right through it just to make sure I can get them right where I want it to go. And just to retain these in each one, I might just go ahead and do that actually before I put this whole thing in. So you'll see as I kind of pre-thread the screw in, it sticks out of the ring terminal nice and neatly, which allows me to then locate the posts on the light bar itself. This side's optional. You can kind of do it either way. It works best for you, whether you do one at a time right into the light itself or you go through all the wires at one time, like I'm doing here. Okay, so now that I've got all my wires in here, I'm gonna place this into position. Again, remember, red on the top, white in the middle, black on the bottom. And now I've got everything pushed through so I can easily find where all those junctions go. I'm gonna go ahead and get all those tighten down. And with that, that's pretty much everything that you need to know to assemble your very own Flex Era LED light bar. So we covered everything from the overmolded power linker to the linker bracket itself, the end mounts and the wiring of the light bar together. So that's a comprehensive look at everything that you're gonna have to do to get up and running. So with that, if you do have any questions on this installation process, please leave them in the comment section below. If you are looking at your light bar and you wanna swap out the bezel colors or the lenses for something a little bit different, we have other videos for that, so just click those in the link in the description below as well. If you need any extra components, give us our customer service team a call, whether you lose a bolt or something like that, and they can get you dialed in. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions, again, leave them in that comment section and we'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for tuning in, and remember to adventure further.